we're pleased to welcome uh, students from Michigan State University's uh, uh, Senior Design and Civil Engineering, Civil and Environmental Engineering group to present some findings from their senior project. Please, welcome. All right, well, thank you. Um, well, first off, I left this somewhat technical, so I'm going to move quickly. Um, we had the Namoka Drain project. Um, <laughs> It was prepared for Capstone Collegiate Investors, which was our senior design, um, I guess, people that tasked us with this. Um, this is our team. We've got two hydrology engineers, Jeff and Khaled, um, me, the transportation engineer, Billy, and uh, also a pavements engineer. Um, looking at this, you can see uh, the orange star is where MSU is, and then our project scope is outlined in yellow near Lake Lansing, taking a closer look. Uh, we can see that it encompasses this area. I'm assuming most of us are familiar with that area since we are. Can you just point out a couple of those main roads for us? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so the main road going vertical straight through the middle of the site is Marsh Road, and then the uh, main crossroad going east-west is Has or, uh, yeah, Hasler Road. Um, that's near the bottom of the uh, uh, project area. Um, the issues here that we're trying to address uh, the first one's frequent flooding um, in the Chaptown Plaza. You can see with this picture, that's a flood event um, recently. Um, poor road conditions. This was actually taken on Potter Street, uh, just north of Hazlitt. And also the uh, interurban pathway, according to the master plan we were just talking about, is unfinished. So that's another thing that we looked at. <clears throat> um, some of our objectives um, really was to create a drainage plan um, with a pipe network. Um, design a portion of the interurban pathway, look at maintaining traffic during construction, and then also design pavements for a 20-year design life. Um, our goals, while we uh, pursued these objectives, was um, more a low impact, so a green design, so maximizing infiltration, minimizing runoff, um, walkable communities, and then reducing impacts to drivers. And also a cost-effective pavement design is always good. <clears throat> Um, looking at the hydrology perspective, um, <clears throat> the uh, first thing we had to collect some data, so looking at the uh, floodplains, um, water level levels as far as the tables are concerned, um, soil borings, looking at uh, how well things infiltrate, and then also topography, so ridges. Um, drainage, also looked at land use as far as how pervious is, or impervious is the area, and then where can we expect to have a lot of runoff. Um, we looked at what design storms we have, how much rain are we actually talking about managing, say, in, in a two-year storm, or every hundred years we get a big, huge storm, maybe. So, um, looked at the existing pipe network. We can see here this is actually a, a shot from some video footage that was going through a pipe. Um, and you can see that some of it is somewhat blocked with uh, tree roots. Um, this actually has the actual pipe network in blue that is usable. Um, and then also in red is the existing detention ponds. Um, in order to... Any information on the size of those pipes? I, was, I... Um, I don't have any with me, and I'm the transportation specialist, not the hydrology. Um, I want to say they were clay pipe, either 8 inch or 12 inch, I believe. Um, either way, that's not big enough. <laughs> so um, that's about the best answer I can give you. But I could give you a better answer if you're really interested. Um, so uh, moving on, looking at uh, how we tackled the project, we broke into three sub-networks. Um, this was due to basically topography, how things drain. So um, looking at the first problem area will be uh, sub-network three, um, as shown here in yellow. <clears throat> and from here, the reason that this was a problem area was due to the fact that uh, it's lower and also it's mostly paved. Therefore, there's a lot of runoff. Um, and, and that's really a problem if you don't have adequate drainage. So what we're proposing in this area is an underground detention facility. There's a difference between detention and retention. I always mess it up. But, um, so there's a detention facility and then also rain gardens and um, <clears throat> let's see, uh, possible regrading of the parking lot. Um, that'll come into play. I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, and then this is a map showing really what we're proposing to implement. Unfortunately, there's not buildings here, so it's a little hard to see, but um, this triangular area is Shoptown Plaza. Um, you can see Basin 1 is where the underground retention basin will be. And then um, there will be, 
teal or or, chi, or cyan, sorry, is the uh, pipe network with inlets? Same yeah. We're seeing oh, oh no, we got it. Oh, oh don't move, don't move, yeah. stay right there. Okay. That's right. <laughs> Something happened. Something good. It's your your energy. Oh, okay. So so we're good now. Oh, okay. okay. Just. Could you, if you could just review those colors again for us, that'd be super. Yeah, yeah, no, that'd so be this great. This is basically south of Hazlitt Road, north of the railroad tracks, and east oh, yep. of Marsh Road, right? Yeah, I can back up. Hey, so these hey, are our oh, nice. so much. three hey. sub-networks. Um, I'm sure this is a lot easier. Yeah. Um, we're starting with sub-network three. Uh, that is in yellow on the bottom, um, kind of actually shown here. So moving along, the uh, pipe network is in... Um, Cyan, that will be what we're proposing. We didn't have any information of the existing pipe sizes, so in order to be safe, we decided that we would uh, just lay new piping in that area. And then also um, in red, you can see the location. Um, it's not drawn to scale what the underground retention detention basin will be. Um, moving on to subnetwork two, which is very similar to subnetwork one, actually. Um, the problems here is a lot of flooding in basements. Um, and then also the drainage structures as far as um, pipes uh, have been somewhat filled with sediment and then also the ditches for some of the residents have actually been filled in and a uh, ditch doesn't work very well when it's actually filled in so um, some of the solutions what we're looking at is uh, using ditches where we can curbs where we have to um, some swales where it's necessary which is similar to a ditch um, and also uh, what else? Oh, there, there is a little bit of underground piping where curbs are. Um, this shows sub-network two. Uh, the magenta is shows areas that are actually will have runoff during a rain event. And then the cyan arrows show where that runoff is heading. Um, there's a lot going on in that picture, but uh, we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. So the dark green here is where we're proposing to add ditches. Um, and then the light dotted green is where swales will be. Um, the swales really help with water moving, say, towards a building. You can kind of intercept it with something similar to a ditch in order to stop that. <clears throat> and um, with this picture looking again, this is an overlay showing the some retention. Well, actually, there's a retention and a detention basin here. Um, and then it also, with the yellow dash, shows where there will be curb and gutter. Um, and, and the reason we use curb and gutter is either an area is really flat or we ran out of right away. And we didn't think that it was necessary to buy it more right away to add a ditch because that's just very expensive. Um, and then looking here for subnetwork two, you can see it's a very simplified version of how the drainage will work. The area is all heading towards the uh, light blue box there, which is the detention, uh, detention pond. <clears throat> um, subnetwork one. Um, basically has the same problems as sub-network 2. It's just a different network because it was on the other side of a ridge. So you, this shows the uh, areas that run off. As you can see, there's a lot of it. Um, there's a small area that's not shaded. That's actually we're proposing to have a detention pond there. Um, looking here, uh, same as before, the dark green is uh, ditches. And then the light green dash will be swales, and then the yellow circles are inlets that have to do with, if we move to the next, um, inlets where there's curb and gutter. <clears throat> and then this is a simplified version of showing how the flow will move down the streets towards the uh, detention pond. Um, with this whole solution, another thing uh, that uh, we have to talk about is, is possible land acquisition. Um, there's actually six houses to the upper left. You can see and uh, those, all of the owners have agreed that if it comes to it that they'd be willing to sell their houses. And um, that would be something we could look at putting a uh, detention pond there. Um, and then the location of our other detention pond, you can see there's two structures to the south. Those might actually have to be um, taken by like a eminent domain. Um, that is still ambiguous at this time. Um, and what I was saying before about using curbs and ditches, the reason that we chose ditches was really uh, the Ingham County Drain Commission, their manual says use ditches whenever you can. Um, it's better for green design. It allows for um, distillation of particles and infiltration. Uh, it's more cost effective because we got to realize that people are paying for this out of their taxes. And then also it's, uh, it's more functional, generally speaking, in this area. 
um, and then curbs were necessary where there was a very flat slope or in places where there wasn't enough right of way on each side of the road. Um, and then these are some cross sections to show generally what it would look like in a section where there's a culvert or uh, a ditch section, say. <clears throat> um, I think we'll only have enough time for a little bit of transportation, unfortunately. Um, but I got the path and don't worry. Uh, <laughs> this is the five-year master plan we were actually talking about just before this. Um, this line in yellow right here shows the segment that we were tasked with um, designing a, a portion. So uh, moving on, this is basically a screenshot of what Water Pulse is proposing as uh, the inner urban pathway. So uh, there's a few key points. Uh, it starts, it goes under the Marsh Bridge there. Um, it crosses Hazlitt Road and then it ends as a boardwalk. Um, that's a little, like a bonus we added there. We'll get to that. Um, so the first thing is a pedestrian bridge. It's really something to talk about. In order to go under or around the Marsh Road area, either we had to come at grade or we had to go under the bridge. Um, it was found that it'd be better to go under the bridge that we did have to actually raise it up in order to get a wide enough walking surface. Um, you can see it's the top left is the cross section view where you can see the uh, small pedestrian bridge to the left of the leftmost pier or uh, that support. That would be looking east? Uh, that would be, yes, yes, looking east. Um, and then, uh, let's see, on the left top, that is a plan view. So looking down on the bridge, how it would look. And then on the bottom is if you were standing on the railroad tracks and you looked at the bridge support and then the bridge, how it would look mm -hmm. uh, from the side there. <clears throat> and then um, the next is, is the boardwalk, uh, which is a 450 foot pier that goes out into Lake Lansing. Um, this was decided that it would be a good idea for several reasons. Um, the first being that the inner urban pathway would, would terminate there for now. I realize there's more to the master plan, but instead of being a path to nowhere, it would actually serve really as a destination, promote usage for the path itself. Um, it was in a study done in 1982, um, I believe it was 82, where residents were saying that they would like pathways but also resting areas where this would be a great place to put benches, um, promote uh, activities in the community such as catch and release fishing, and then, I mean, we have Lake Lansing, so why not capitalize on it and have you know, some kind of overlook? my opinion. Um, and then so we've got the uh, side view, plan view of the pier. Um, if anybody has been to uh, Hawk Island, that's what the canopies are supposed to look like. They have some there, if anybody gets that reference, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, moving on, um, in order to do this thing, we'll have to have some land acquisition here also. Um, the Vision Collision Auto Body Center, their parcels, which are listed here, we'd have to reclaim about 8,700 square feet um, out of those two parcels. That would be necessary um, to go through this section. You can see they're hatched, uh, those two parcels. And then also, according to MDOT standards, the crossing over um, Hazlitt Road is a type B crossing, which a pedestrian signal, the Rectangular Rapid Flashing Beacon, RRFB for short, would be um, something that we could look at installing if it meets all criteria. Um, but that's just the MDOT standard, that's just what I use in my design analysis. <clears throat> um, let's see. Do I have more time? No? Okay, well I guess we'll have to leave it here, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but I, I could keep going for another half hour, so. <clears throat> well thank you for that. Yeah. I think um, you have several presentations you wanted to do. Okay. Two more. Two more. Let's let's hold questions if we could until we get through the presentations, and then we can uh, hit questions all at once. Is that okay? That's okay with you. Hi everybody. We have a different project. Your, this could have been put on an easel, but you'll just have to squint at it. That's our site plan. Um, while I get this loaded up, my name's Anna Strong. Um, I was one of the students that was on the Hazlitt Village Square project. Um, so I'll 
tries, it was really hard to get a semester's worth of work into a 50 minute presentation and then I had to get that into a 10 minute presentation. So um, <laughs> you're going to see a really general overview of what we did and I'll try a little harder to um, explain the scope of the project so that it's a little easier for Matt and Lindsay um, when they're presenting theirs. Um, but like I said, if you have any other further questions about the details of the project, um, especially on the technical side, feel free to let me know. I can have Dr. Mastin send over our full PowerPoint, our reports. All right. So um, basically our project consisted of a seven-member design team. There was a structural expert that was responsible for the apartment design. Um, a geotechnical expert responsible for the um, excavation and foundation design, a hydrology expert responsible for stormwater management, an environmental expert that was responsible for brewery water and wastewater treatment system, a pavements expert that was responsible for any design or rehabilitation we had on site, and a transportation expert. Um, and then each group had a project manager. Um, that was me, Anna Strong. So our scope area of Hazlitt Village Square is a 29-acre site in Hazlitt, in Hazlitt, Michigan. It's at the southwest corner of Hazlitt and Marsh Roads, and you can see it outlined in the yellow boundaries on the screen. It's about two miles north of the Grand River Corridor where, you know, Meridian Mall and uh, Meyer are located, you know, some larger establishments. Um, back in 2011, I believe it was, the Ellen L. Food Center's uh, grocery store closed down, which was kind of the anchor of the site, um, if I'm understanding that correctly, and that kind of led to to increasing vacancies on site um, due to that closure. So you'll also see south of the site is Raby Road, which is an abandoned unpaved road, as well as a cleared area where two ab abandoned houses exist. So some of the existing conditions surrounding the site include a large FEMA floodplain area um, to the west of the site. We want to be careful not to develop in there due to um, structural deficiencies that would occur. Uh, extending a little, a little farther than that is um, the Meridian Central Wetlands Preserve. We also want to be careful not to develop there. Um, long story short, wetlands are hard to mitigate and they're really beautiful, so we're not going to develop in there either. Um, there's also a detention basin south of the site that water drains into and lets out into the Pine Lake outlet drain. You'll see along the south border of the site there is um, the Grand Trunk Western Railroad and running right along that is the interurban pathway, which is a paved pathway that's shared by pedestrians and cyclists as you know we discussed in Billy's um, presentation. Right now it ends at Marsh Road. So for our project it, we were given a developer called Capstone Collegiate Investors so some of these aspects might not be necessarily relevant to Hazlitt Village Square as it is today um, but we were charged with putting an apartment on site, a grocery, a brewery, and a restaurant um, which T right now, Hazlitt Village Square is zoned as a commercial district, so that, um, long story short, we would have to get it zoned as a mixed-use plan unit development. So this includes residential uses, commercial uses, um, industrial, etc. cetera. Um, so we kind of evaluated the redevelopment goals for both the developer and for Meridian, Meridian Township and the community members, and we did this by looking at um, I talked to the property manager, Bill Shy. We looked at the Meridian Township Master Plan that is now getting updated. Um, we looked at the Interurban Pathway Plan, the Green Space Plan, et cetera. I also met with the Link Group here. And basically what all these goals come down to is we want to create a destination that gets the develop it makes the developer a profit because these businesses are vacant the developer hasn't been making a profit in a very long time. But we also want to provide something for the community that's relevant to both the population as it is now, but also brings in new business. So this is our site plan. And we came up with a site plan that we believe achieves these goals. Um, so you can see the apartment building to the west is isolated from the rest of the site. Um, this is to provide the re residents with a little bit more of um, a private feel, even though they do have direct access to the site. We also provided a grocery in the southwest portion, a attached brewery and restaurant in the southeast portion, um, as well as we've kept the existing bank in the northeast portion and repurpose some buildings. So we've also incorporated retail, coffee, book, bike, bike shop, 
et cetera, on site. So some of the site accommodations we put in place in order to kind of create a marriage between these buildings was we created a pedestrian only central walkway through the middle of the site. This walks past not only the storefronts of the buildings, but also community green space and um, provides safety from any sort of vehicular or cyclist interactions that pedestrians would have. Um, I go to MSU, if you've ever been walking on campus during you know the peak hours between classes, cyclists and pedestrians pedestrians do not mix well. So we didn't want to put bikes at all in the center of the site. We've also kept traffic at the perimeters of the site as well as parking. And we've extended the interurban pathway to go around the site up to Hazlitt Road. So the current detention basin as it is, um, is a dry basin and it doesn't exactly meet the stormwater requirements for the site. Um, so we've extended it into a wet pond basin that so to make it a little more aesthetic, but also provide for the stormwater needs of the site, and we've created a pedestrian bridge that goes over this detention basin as well. So to highlight a bit of the buildings that we thought were really important uh, as part of the scope were the grocery store, which we've reinstated in the previous grocery store building. Um, this was not only convenient, but it was also expressed by Meridian Township officials as highly recommended. Um, we've also... Uh, said that it could be an organic specialty grocer. Um, if you've ever been to Horrocks, that's a great example of what we think could compete with larger businesses down on Grand River and bring in business to this site. We've also incorporated a green roof on the roof um, that's made of vegetable planters, so this can kind of create a garden on the roof, but also, um, in, especially since we live in Michigan, during the winter time, it can be easily removed. The brewery and restaurant, we decided to incorporate together. The brewery is a 50,000 square foot brewery with a 100,000 barrel per year production capacity of beer. The attached restaurant includes an indoor seating portion on the first floor, as well as an, a rooftop terrace that overlooks the brewery's green roof and opens up onto rooftop lawn bowling. The first floor portion that's on the outdoor portion um, is a beer patio that looks up onto an entertainer stage. Um, and this patio was placed adjacent to community green space so that if you're not 21 and able to enjoy delicious alcohol like the rest of the adults, you can still enjoy whatever entertainment comes to sight. The apartment building houses about 160 residents and it has designated underground and perimeter parking. Like I said, we isolated it to the west to give the residents um, kind of a more private feel as well as kept it really far from the railroad tracks, but it still has direct access to the site. Um, another important thing to point out in our project is that the fourth floor overlooks the, gr the brewery and grocery store green roof, so it increases property values for the developer. Um, some impact, low impact design elements that we incorporated on site um, to minimize stormwater runoff include um, green space, the green roof on the brewery and the grocery store. Um, the pedestrian walkway uses brick pavers instead of concrete, which also reduces runoff, as well as a cistern near the apartment building um, to collect stormwater to use for gardening. Some safety and walkability elements that I wanted to highlight um, are again the pedestrian centered aisle throughout the site. We've kept parking at the peripherals and provided more parking than was needed for the minimum. Um, we, want to, we wanted to account for the growth in business that would happen in the future and not go at the minimum parking requirements. And we also wanted to point out that we live in Michigan, so when there's snow, some of these parking spaces are going to be you know, covered up or not easily accessible. Um, we've also provided 90 bike spaces on site. and. Uh, created, you know, raised walkways for pedestrian safety um, that, and created walkways throughout each of the parking areas so that it's very direct for pedestrians and they can safely walk through the site. The interurban pathway, um, as I said, is extended up along to Hazlitt Road. And we just wanted to highlight the fact that this can increase um, bike and pedestrian traffic around the site, especially since we've placed bike parking at the peripherals of the site as well near major entrances to, to enhance bike, uh, pedestrian safety. And we've also incorporated a pedestrian bridge that goes over this extended wet pond basin. So in order to make sure that we were protecting mature trees on site, um, we wanted to address the fact that land clearing was going to be inevitable for the method, so for what we wanted to incorporate in our project. You know, we're incorporating a 50,000 square 
foot brewery and have to account for parking for that along with everything else that we're developing. So our team did a tree impact inventory in which we took um, counts of trees at the perimeters of that cleared area south of the site and created a density ratio um, that we assigned to every area in which we were developing. So we were we defined mature trees as trees with 12 inch diameter or greater and found that in order to accommodate for the parking lot that we were developing south of the site, we would only be cutting out 35 mature trees total and 14 trees total for the urban pathway um, and pond extension. Now most of these were mature pines, so they weren't large maples or anything like that. So yes, we're cutting these out, um, but also a lot of these can be grown back quickly. The project cost that we estimated for this was about $24 million. Um, that's including contingency fees as well as engineering fees. And the construction schedule is estimated to take about 16 months. Um, we recommended that they open in February to they start construction in February to open in June of 2017. Um, we did this because the main demographic that we are designing for is Hazlitt is the city of Hazlitt, not MSU students that are leaving campus during the summer months. So kids are going to be off of school, families are going to be willing to take time off to be with their kids, um, and we want the older demographic to more easily access the site during the warmer months. Um, you don't want to open it in January when it's still, you know, negative two degrees. Although, I mean, it is Michigan, so it could still be snowing in June. I don't have any idea. <laughs> So we went over the um, review of our goals for this project. I'll try to keep it short since I know Matt still has to present, but basically we provided a sustainable site. Um, sa we provided safety and walkability. We maximized green space. We exceeded the landscaping requirements and also accounted for 30% of our buildable area was um, classified green space. We protected mature trees on site and re maintained or repurposed three of the existing buildings. Um, and we put businesses on site that we knew would be able to compete with larger businesses on Grand River um, that would stay viable in the long term so that vacancies don't occur down the road. Um, and overall, we just we created a close-knit storefront access design for pedestrians so that it really mer created a marriage of community there. So this is Hazlitt Village Square as it exists today. People are driving to work and they look over and they see empty buildings. And people are driving their kids to school down Marsh and they see, they look over and they see an empty lot. And what we've done is we've created a site that people would be able to go to as a destination. That, you know, if you're grandparents and you want to take your kids to dinner, you can go to dinner at the restaurant and then head over to ice cream. Um, if you want to get your bike fixed, you can drop it off at the store and then go hang out on the rooftop of the brewery for some lawn bowling. Um, for all you husbands with wives that like to shop, you can over, head over to the retail spaces, and then when she tells you how much it's going to cost, you can head over to the bank. So we were... <laughs> we, we created a place that people aren't just going to go to for one thing and leave. You know, they're going to come and enjoy themselves and be able to call this um, a place that they're proud to have part of their community. So um, if you have any questions for me, um, feel free to ask Dr. Masson. I'd love to forward you our full presentation. Like I said, this is an hour-long presentation combined into 10 minutes. So um, I could, like Billy said, I could talk about this for a very long time since I cried over it all semester. So <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. If we have one more presentation like that, then we'll have time for some questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what time is it? Why don't I just post this? 7.40. Yeah. 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 They're planning it. <clears throat> Can we get the IT guy back one more time? Because it was it was phasing in and out. Uh, Not the IT guy, it's the HOM TV guy. Home TV guy. HOM TV guy. Yeah, because it was. I mean, see. That's okay. Well, not as good as it was, but it's better. It was sort of blurring and then clearing and blurring and then clearing. Yeah. It's a frequency. Do. It's a frequency setting. <clears throat> That'll do. Go ahead. Are we all set? Yeah, okay. please. 
Well, good evening. My name is Matt, and uh, like Dr. Masson said, we're from Michigan State University, and um, this, we are one of the groups that uh, first senior design came up with a proposed redevelopment. Um, our group was called Wilson Consulting, so uh, we'll move forward as Wilkins, Wilson Consulting. Um, so, and before we get started, I'd just like to thank the panel for allowing us to come in and speak to you today. Really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, Lindsay and I are very excited to be here, and we're very proud of uh, what we put together, and we hope you enjoy it. Um, with that being said, uh, again, we are Wilson Consulting, where we strive for quality, excellence, and reliability. Uh, we prepared a um, proposed development for the um, a proposed engineering development or proposed engineering design for the proposed redevelopment of Hazlitt Village Square. Man. Um, before we get started, we we'll do some introductions uh, of our team. Uh, unfortunately, only two of us were able to be here. Uh, again, my name is Matt, and I was the project manager. And my name is Lindsay Pedersen, and I was the transportation specialist for the project. Thank you. And just uh, we'll do a, I'll do a quick overview of what we're going to cover uh, this evening. Uh, very quickly, we're going to go over the scope, uh, address some of the planning issues that we identified, and then we're going to transition into some of the mixed-use development, uh, walkable community aspects, uh, and on the wetland impacts, and then hopefully have time for some Q&A at the end. So let's get started. Um, so the scope, our, our objective was to develop a preliminary engineering design that incorporated a mixed-use development, including a residential building, a new grocery store, a restaurant, and a brewery. Um, the site location, as we all know, is in Hazlitt, uh, Michigan, uh, within Meridian Township at the crossroads of ha ha Hazlitt Road and Marsh Road. Currently, the site sits on roughly 29 acres, as previously stated. Uh, there are 38 storefront properties, and 22 of which are vacant. Um, so, the, so as part of our initial planning, um, we d we really uh, delved right. Really uh, wanted to delve into the Meridian Township Master Plan, Meridian Township Green Space Master Plan, and Meridian Township Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan. Really felt it was important to incorporate the goals, uh, objectives, and vision of Meridian Township into the building blocks of our foundation for our design. And some of the goals we were able to extract um, from those documents. Some of the key goals was, number one, we wanted to maximize green space. Number two, we wanted to preserve natural resources. And number three, we wanted to um, create a walkable community. Uh, so moving forward, uh, we identified also that the zoning uh, needed to be, the, the current zoning was commercial and it needed to be rezoned to the mixed-use uh, planned unit development, the MUPUD. Um, so that we can incorporate the, the walkability of the project. So here's our proposed mix. Our, here's, here's our proposed site plan layout. Um, like I said, we really wanted our site to. We really wanted to create an environment where people would want to gather for uh, commerce, entertainment, and recreation. Uh, a place where the whole community, uh, like Anna mentioned, a place where the whole community could gather. So one of the, so early on in the decision, early decisions uh, that we, we we made was that we wanted to um, push all the buildings out to the perimeter of the of the site uh, along Hazlitt Road and, and Marsh Road, and and create number for, or for two reasons. Number one, to create an ex, ex no, uh, aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing uh, view for passer buyers. And then number two, we also wanted to open up the property um, to the south and to the, and to the west. Uh, there's beautiful wetlands, there's beautiful um, mature trees and, and whatnot of the property that we really feel the existing layout is really hiding. I, I was actually there today driving on the property before I came to this meeting. And just driving the property, all the buildings just hide all that beautiful nature. Uh, and so, so those were the two aspects we originally wanted to, that, that in the original planning that uh, we wanted to do. And plus, it also opens it up, opens up the property to, and we wanted to, uh, to create a central hub, not only for the community but also within the site itself. And we'll talk about that in, in just a moment. So let's take a little bit, let's take a walk around the property and talk about the mixed use. So. Part of our scope was design a four-story building with four levels of residential living. Um, we really wanted to capture the mixed-use living. So, for instance, in structure two, as you see, uh, first floor, we decide, well, so we decided to go with two residential buildings. The first structure, structure two, 
Um, the first floor we designated for parking, and then second through fourth floors we designated as residential living apartments. And then in structure one, uh, the first floor we, we designated for six units of retail uh, storefront, and then the other half of structure one as our grocery store. And then uh, similarly, um, floors two through four will be designated as residential living. So it really encompasses that mixed use feel um, as the um, as the apartments are pushed all the way to the road as close as possible. So as we move east, we come into our restaurant where we really envision our restaurant to have a encompass a rooftop patio feel, kind of like the Blue Water and the, uh, the Mayfair down the road. And also, we want to uh, design uh, the restaurant to have ample uh, patio space. And as we head south, we come to our brewery, and we made sure that uh, to create a brewery layout in order for the uh, for the production to warrant a wastewater treatment plant, which was part of the scope of the um, environmental engineer. And I want to clarify that the wastewater treatment plant is really a, a pre-treatment wastewater treatment plant, and that the within the scope of the environmental engineer, like a uh, like I just mentioned, it was it, it, he was um, within his scope. He was um, to design uh, all that, and so we we have all the details on, um, provided for that. So, which brings us, uh, if we head west over to our again, like I said, our central hub, which where we truly just want to create a, a, a site that brings people together for the community, but also within the site, a focal point or a courtyard feel, as we like to call a central hub, where all the sidewalks lead to and funnel down into the back lot. Which now, Lindsay will talk about the walkability aspect of that. So part of being the transportation specialist is to not only consider um, vehicle and motorized trips, but also to consider pedestrians as well and how they're going to um, move throughout the site. So as part of walkability, we have created a sidewalk that runs along the entire perimeter of that um, roadway that goes on the edge of the site, as well in front of all the storefronts, the restaurant, the brewery, uh, and the dog park. And... Um, from there, we also have crosswalks that make it easily accessible throughout parts of the site, especially on that southern portion with the brewery, wastewater treatment plant, and dog park. And we have the um, pathway on the central hub that has a crosswalk that leads down to our off-road corridors, our ORCs. So it's an extension of the inner urban pathway. Um, so that way you can, uh, pedestrians and members can feel free to come and meet at the central hub as a um, community gathering place and then they can move along to um, those ORCs and that inner urban pathway and, and that inner urban pathway and the um, extension to that is supposed to be a shared use path so that way it can be used for runners, walkers, strollers, bicycles, uh, uh, skateboards, so whatever um, you wish. And um, it's important to note that those off-road corridors um, follow the Meridian Township Green Space Plan. And um, as far as the uh, accessing the wetlands and um, how to construct those as well. Right. So indeed, there are wetlands on the south portion of the property. Um, so we were able, so, so we were able to identify that at the uh, early onset of, of the project. Here's a quick layover of. The uh, wetlands, obviously, in red, um, and you notice that they do cover some of the off-road quarters that we are proposing. Now, some uh, now some of the permits that were re that are required for the site, um, in particular, the Part 303 wetlands protection says that if any of the wetlands are disturbed in an area, then you need to uh, reproduce those wetlands on your site. Uh, but there is a caveat to that uh, protection uh, permit that if less than a third of an acre is disturbed, then there's no need for remediation of those said wetlands. So within our site, uh, there is less than a third uh, of disturbing, disturbance of the wetlands, so there, are, there is no warranted um, uh, remediation of said wetlands. <laughs> okay, so quick in summary, uh, we were tasked with the objective to create a mixed-use um, design layout incorporating a residential building, which we elected to have two, a new grocery store, a restaurant, and a brewery. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it might make sense to take uh, questions first on the, the first project, since these last two are basically the same site. Sure. Maybe if we were to look at the uh, at the first one first, that would help us get through. Oops. 
Oh, don't know what happened. Or how do you get back to the I just escaped or something. Oh. Just want to yeah, no, that's great. Gorgeous. Just had to get warmed up. Need me to plug anything in for no, questions? No, don't touch a plug. <laughs> 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 it's already there. It's yeah. All right. You can look at the logo and talk to you. Yeah. All right, don't. No, I gotta turn off my power button. Just one second. Sorry about that. No, that's gonna distract us if we have that one up there. I think. Right. Um, I have a question. It kind of maybe pertains to all of the teams, but yours in particular because I happen to be personally involved with the issue that you talked about first, the drain. Right. Um, are you working with, I mean, this was a school project. I understand yes. that. But have you actually been in discussions with the the Namoka drain, as you're probably well aware, is in fact being designed by somebody yes. right now. LSG. And besides the drainage district or drain commissioner, there's a consulting firm that's working on it. Have you been in touch with them and are you sharing your ideas? And Yes. So? Uh, <clears throat> uh, to put it, uh, I guess, lamely, yes. Um, the water resource specialist met with uh, LSG Engineering, um, Greg there, uh, three times, I believe. Um, and then he provided us with actually quite a bit of information to base our designs off of and um, helped kind of troubleshoot our design. Okay. Um, the the uh, retention basin, I think it's sub unit three, right. under the shop right. Yes, thing, yes. <clears throat> that's uh, buried under the. I mean, the, to be it, the design is to be buried underneath the the, uh, per, the pavement. Is that yes. correct? Um, and <laughs> how much of the of the surface would that take? There, there. And I ask that just because there's an issue with. A concern by the owner of oh. that because you can't build on the top of that um, a retention base. Right. So how much does that take, or does it go under the street? Is you designing it under the street or <clears throat> under the parking lot or what? The thought was with that to have it underground. Um, they actually did this in Ann Arbor. Is it's um, it's a concrete structure similar to a tank that's actually underground, <coughs> where the uh, top of it would be paved and it would just be parking, where you wouldn't even know it was there after it was constructed. You can't um, build on top of it other than a parking parking lot. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, you can pretty much do anything with engineering if you want to pay enough, <laughs> but um, I don't know if that would be a great idea. To but it's right along the road, and, and yes. how far, how large of a um, or what would the that was the be? next slide actually? Uh, there, it was it'd be done in three spaces to make sure there'd be enough parking during construction. Um, <laughs> there was a seventy three hundred square foot print, and then a uh, sixty eight, and then a 4,000, a little over that. Um, generally speaking, the uh, in front of the Shop Town Plaza where there's that parking, it would take up most of that area. Oh, it would. Um, okay. So it is it's a good size. <clears throat> okay. All right. And one other thing. You, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I hate to ask these real fine details. But oh, one no, other question. Fine. And There was a, um, I think you called it a, well, it's a drain you were proposing to go basically off of Shaw Street behind my condominium complex and then north towards the towards the lake if you recall that <laughs> um, um, you, can you turn your slides back on Is yeah that, well yeah I can bring them also yeah maybe maybe that would make it easier right I, the general question though and you could probably answer this is are you there are certain small retention areas within this this drainage district already one of which happens to be behind the condo complex I live in and I'm curious are you incorporating those little retention <coughs> basins into kind of your design um that would be let's see here is that uh, uh it's not coming up unfortunately oh oh yeah 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 Oh, there we go. 
Okay. Yeah, it's on the. Uh, well, you see the there's a, a, a U-shaped group right. of buildings. That's the complex, and there was a drain that you showed be going behind there and then heading north. There it is. Yeah. I'm just wondering. There is a retention base oh, yeah, in yeah. there, and if that if that <clears throat> kind of drain is to be incorporated within some kind of retention basin, it would go through the basin and then drain out. Is that contemplated, or was that part of your thinking? Or you're talking about the light green dash? Yes. Um, and and yes, that is a that's a swale, so it's really to just stop overland flow. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. I meant actually not the not the. Uh, I think it's actually a ditch. Isn't it uh, the yeah? Here. It starts there and goes behind the buildings. You had the behind. cursor on the right place before, oh. but north so. north of the group of buildings. Here? Yes, that. Oh yeah, that, this that's a that's a swale. That is so, a swale. Oh um, okay. All right. Um, just for overland flow, I I'm not the hydrology expert, unfortunately, oh, okay. so I wouldn't be able to answer that. Okay. Well, um, thanks. So. Wondering what's going to happen to our pond. Back there. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, Personal any interest. Other it's questions? Gone and I sold or... my condo. <laughs> so I had a question about. I was a little bit unclear on understanding how you your vision of the um, interurban connecting. You, you said something about connecting it across uh, via vision collision, and I needed a little oh. clarification on that. Yes. All right. So, looking at this area, um, most of can you put it in actual display mode? Yes. No. Dang. Oops. Uh, well, I tried. <clears throat> oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Um. There we, there we go. Excellent. All right. Um, y yes, most of the interurban pathway, how it was designed, was to make use of consumer energy's right of way. Um, that's what it's been doing actually up until now for the previous. Um, for this section here, if. Uh, hmm. How to point this out? Um, if you follow the north arrow north, uh, the first main rectangle we come across is a railroad right of way. And the next rectangle, which is right next to the three for the bottom parcel, that is the starting of the consumer's energy right of way after it crosses over the road. So for this small area in here, in order to continue across the road, it was necessary to buy up some type of right of way to have the path go um, in that area. So, so the building you show there is still the post office, is that right? Uh, yeah. Yes, the smaller one. Smaller. That's oh, the corner of it. Yeah, the big one is vision, vision collision, right? right? Right. Okay, so you're putting people on the road. Okay. So we come up to Hazlitt Road. And then, okay, I guess so. Right, so it makes use of the sidewalk, really. It just bumps up from a 7-foot sidewalk to a... Uh, 12 foot width is, is what we use in our design um, and then that goes down the sidewalk and then in order to stay off the railroads right of way it turns and then follows that um, well, I believe to... so and how yes and how would the road crossing of Hazlitt Road work then the crossing of Hazlitt Road yeah um, I don't have a very close, but well, here we go. Oop, there we go. Uh, looking here, you you can kind of see it very zoomed out. Mm -hmm. What it does is um, it uses like all of my specs are from Ashdo, and it comes towards the road. It actually goes behind Jonathan's barber shop, mm -hmm. and then there's I believe that's a, there's a small building for either gas or water. I'm not sure what that's used yes. for. Uh -huh. And um, what it does is it skirts that and then what it does is from there it crosses almost completely perpendicular. I wasn't able to get it um, perfect due to just design constraints. Um, <clears throat> and then it will cross over there and then what it would be is a, a normal marked crossing unless it meets specs and then um, we'd be able to um, 
assuming that Meridian Township refers to MDOT specs as far as pedestrian signal installation, then it might be warranted to install a, a, like a rectangular rapid flash from Beacon. Would be. And you said there would be some land acquisition to be required to do that? Um, not to cross over. No, but for this, to make that red line a reality. Right, um, and, and that was what we were talking about with vision. Um, in and around there, those two parcels, um, one to extend the, uh, to widen the sidewalk as part of it, and then mm -hmm. from there to go, um, if you look, you can kind of see that there's, they have a parking lot, but their parcel doesn't end just at that parking lot. It keeps going, so yes. Um, but only north of Hazlitt Road. They right. wouldn't require any additional land south of Hazlitt nope. Road? No, uh, there would have to be a renegotiating of the lease agreement um, on, to include more of the right-of-way from consumers. But. So is that railroad right-of-way, though, or you're saying there's consumer power right-of-way right alongside the railroad? Yeah, there's consumer right And those are independent? They're, in, they're adjacent, route. yeah. Hmm. So. The consumers took over. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, where the car wash is in behind? Yes. Uh, okay. Behind the car wash. <clears throat> cool. Hmm. And that then connects up to Lake Drive and just uh, puts you on the loop around the lake? Yes. That's generally what it does. Unless you go out on the boardwalk at a pier out in the middle of the lake. Yes. Well, right. Well, <laughs> well there used to be a club in the middle of the lake. <laughs> Let's not get too far. All right, any other questions, comments for this project proposal? Great, thank you very much. I'm sure we've got other questions for the other teams. All right. Unfortunately, Anna needed to leave. Mm. Um, good works, but um, Lindsay and Matt are here, and hopefully we can answer any questions about agate projects. Sure. This is kind of her competition. <laughs> <laughs> You. So I, I did have one question. So both of you have had breweries. <laughs> it, was, uh, it wasn't clear to me whether a brewery was an assignment or a brewery was just a, a good idea that therefore uh, appealed to both teams. Yeah, it was a part within the scope of our project as, as academia is concerned. Yeah, they have, like, every year there's slightly different changes to the project, so in order to accommodate for um, the environmental engineers to have part of the project as well, they were to create this brewery with a wastewater treatment plant. Last semester, um, it was an air plume prob problem, and someone from Meridian Township came and sat in and actually thought that there was an air plume that went <laughs> over the area, which there is not, there is no air plume. <laughs> but, yeah, that was just, uh, we know that it's probably not realistic to actually put a brewery in this area, but that was just, yeah, part of the project. So. Wait, why do you oh, think yeah. that? Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not jump to well, conclusions. Yeah, seriously, you guys <laughs> need to understand <laughs> that bicycles and breweries go well together. Yes, yes. that's <laughs> correct. Ice cream and you got a perfect trifecta. <laughs> ice cream and you can right. walk. Um, but it, you did mention, or someone mentioned, the idea that you needed a destination and you uh, place, and you do for this area because it is off Grand River. It's not a highly uh, traveled spot except for the residents and. Uh, frankly, a brewery would be one of those kinds of things that could bring people up. Uh, somebody mentioned the organic store. That could be a destination, too, I think. So, I mean, yes, I think definitely. those are good ideas. Yeah. And it's, I like breweries. It's interesting to me how very different the two proposals for the same site are. Um, in particular, the approach that you've taken here. Uh, doesn't reuse the existing buildings. That, that's correct, yes. I was wondering if you could speak to the, the reasons for that and the, the implications of that cost-wise from your work. Yeah, sure, that's a great question. And thank you for pointing that out. We really uh, struggled at the beginning of our project, uh, as Lindsay can attest to, of what um, how we were going to uh, tackle and handle this issue of the existing buildings. And what it boiled down to as a team decision, we decided to demol demolish, dem demolish. demolish all the existing buildings. <laughs> Number one, uh, the, the first rationale was, like I said, there's 38 apartment or 38 storefront 
the storefront. Storefronts, yeah. 38 storefronts. I can't talk today. I'm sorry. You guys got me nervous. It's the cameras that do yeah. that. You get, you get so in uh, 22, of, like I said, 22 are vacant. So we, we really felt we, we needed to have a, a change, um, a brand change, if you will, with that site so that the community, after the development was completed, so that the community can differentiate between the old development and this new development. And also to, um, to incorporate our vision of creating our walkable community and our mixed-use development. Because like I, said, like I mentioned before, there's so much beautiful green space out there that is hidden uh, by the buildings that uh, with the current layout as it is right now. And um, there was been countless times where I've been on this site where I've just envisioned and opening it up and it just it just would just open up this the site and just it would make it so much more appealing um, for generations to come and um, and also we did factor that into the, our, our financial cost analysis at the end which I didn't include in this presentation I didn't feel that was uh, warranted but uh, again Dr. Masson can forward you my our, our 50 minute PowerPoint presentation <laughs> along with our report if, if you would like to see that also. Did you compare the costs of the two these two proposals? No we, we didn't really have that much in our okay. comparison going on between the groups. It was more it was really of a, a competitive nature mm -hmm. So the winner got hundred dollars. So we won. <laughs> <laughs> Most aspects we try to keep secret, but <laughs> it's beer money. So. <laughs> so similar question I, I asked uh, the other gentleman: Have you been in contact with any developers that are expressing any interest, or the owner of the, you know, the facility now? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, our, yes, actually, our environmentalist specialist that isn't here today, he was able to contact the current uh, property management team. And so he, he was able to speak with them and, and get some information about what, what's existing. And like um, I, I believe Anna mentioned in her presentation, there are two residential uh, buildings sitting on the back part of the lot that are vacant. Um, and so. Are those along Raby Road? Is yeah, the Raby Road. Ish. They, they call it a Raby Road, but it's like it, the extension of Raby Road. Right? Yeah, it's like an abandoned. I think it's an abandoned road. Yeah, yeah abandoned part of Raby Road. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. And then, um, of course, we did uh, multiple beer tours and to, to learn about the brewing process. And we had a lot school of related only. Yeah, school related. So, <laughs> a lot of research in that. Right. <laughs> question about um, the dog park. I was trying to look at the scale at the bottom. I'm not good at visualizing how big this would be. Or uh, do you have like an acreage of what? It's an issue that comes up in this community a lot of dog parks, big big ones or small ones. I was just curious as to... Yeah, that's, current, that's drawn to scale. Uh, well, yeah. Within a 180 about. scale. But um, that is 1,500 square feet. Okay. And then also, uh, we have uh, two proposed pavilions on the back lot there. Um, okay. They're the orange, or not the orange, but the, the red, the PA and the PB. Yeah. And again, that's also to assist in the walkability of uh, incorporating the, uh, uh, the off road corridors with the existing urban pathways uh, to provide uh, more of a service for the community, really, and also for the residents on, um, on the site that will live on the site. Like uh, Lindsay mentioned earlier, uh, for bicyclists, <coughs> or, uh, pedestrians, or walkers, or or whoever wants to utilize um, the pathways. Okay. So, south of this property, there is a uh, the topography changes and goes mm -hmm. down, Correct. dips. Is that where like the dog park and the wastewater treatment plant is? Is that? I mean, does that have to be? Are you changing the topography there, or you'd have? We made sure that we designed all, everything is above that ridge. There's a natural oh. ridge, you, you notice the ORCs, they kind of go around that ridge. Okay, so everything's so on. That, there's a, that L. <laughs> it's on the existing level of the earth. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's the ridge I think you're referring to. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All this is above uh, Grand Green, as we call it, the green of the top here. And then this, this is where it tips down, and that's why there's a, a place. 
Okay. That's I was just trying to visualize that. Thanks. Yeah. So the brewery is sitting on the, basically on the parking lot that is in front of the of the uh, uh, laundry right now. Yes. Uh, yeah, in the famous taco. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And you've chosen a style with the buildings right up at the at the street with the parking behind it. Correct. Yeah, we definitely. That was, again, that was one of our initial decisions at the beginning of the project. We really felt like we wanted to create that inner, inner urban feel where, feel where um, uh, like for instance, uh, the, uh, the Hamptons of the Meridian are on the Meridian, um, uh, Hagedorn and Mount Hope. Uh, they have their buildings pushed all the way up to the, to the sidewalk. And really, that was really our inspiration for the, our project. And mm -hmm. there's some other key, uh, our, our key Structures uh, within Meridian Township also, uh, for instance, uh, on Troll Bridge, they're building those new apartments up right to the road. And also in Lansing, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of development where they're this uh, up to the, close to the road as possible kind of feel, and having it being mixed use with retail and, or commercial on the bottom, and then residential uh, above it. So that was really our inspiration for, for that design, as well mm -hmm. as um, the goals, objectives, and vision of Meridian Township. Cool. Any other questions, comments, proposals, reviews? Great. Well, thank you once again for coming, and and congratulations on finishing your your studies, and best of luck in your in your next endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We should comment that. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. McConnell and I did some site visiting and we were a little late because Famous Taco is too slow, so I hope that brewery is going to be a little quicker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think they should take it. Um, I think it would be better if you take it back with yeah, you. Yeah, probably better if you keep it, but it would be really good if we, if we could get the PowerPoints, okay. I think, uh, if, that's, if you're willing to share them. Uh, I don't know if that's acceptable to you guys but it's always we put the power, we put that online. with permission yeah, yeah, we'll put them online with, with permission yeah. I mean these are yeah, academic products so you have to think about it right no uh, I understand sure but, but if you want to share it <laughs> well I would point out that um, super, okay super thank you um, thank you